but you have the most unusual theory on two-point conversions. How do you explain that? It's not working very well right now. So, <laughs> um, what happens is is we there's a certain look on. It's not plan that we're going for for sure in the first one. You know, we go out there and they give us a certain look. Our our, our PAT team's out there, and then we take an advantage look, just like a quarterback does. Matt does all the time when we give him audibles to run, and unfortunately they haven't worked as planned. And then that's put us behind at that point, behind the number game in sense, and so it's forced some other ones that we've had to do just to try to catch up. So are you a change of plans with that from now on? or? No, I mean, it's just like anything. If, you, if you're not running the ball well, you don't all of a sudden stop running it. So if people give us an advantage that we think are in our favor, we'll still try to take advantage of them and hopefully we'll execute better. But isn't the whole theory behind two-point conversions, don't fall behind early on it and only take it when you need them? Yeah, well, like Scott says, we're positive here. We're, we're thinking that we make them when we try, so we're thinking that we're getting up by eight you know, okay. right away. Even if the percentages are against you. Yeah, they are. But in what we're doing, we're, we're hoping the percentages are for us because we're not just deciding to go for it regardless. You know, we're going for it versus looks that we think are in our favor. Are you? Do you religiously follow that chart that coaches have that was developed on the two-point? Yeah, there's different. I mean, those charts, there's actually different charts that disagree with each other. So um, what we do for uh, a lot of the times, there are sometimes certain fills, you know, we may go against it um, just by a fill of the game and momentum. And, um, you know, but for the most part, we, we usually follow.